yourself a cold one. They strike them, huh? And listen to Ross Tucker break down the top college prospects on another tasty edition of The College Draft. It's Daddy Soda time here on the College Draft Podcast, always presented, of course, by DraftKings Sportsbook. I'm Ross Tucker, former NFL offensive lineman, five teams, seven years. Now I call games for either CBS Sports on television, Westwood One Radio for national radio. That Bengals-Vikings game was awesome. A week from now, Christmas Day, I'll actually be in the booth for the Giants and the Eagles love all the podcasts we get to do here as part of the network Ross Tucker football podcast every morning giving you everything you need to know in 25 minutes or less with what's going on in the NFL Tuesdays even money the betting podcast Wednesday and Thursday fantasy feast podcast which by the way even if you're not into betting or not into fantasy football it's just different stats different ways different analysis different ways to look at the games And I love this show, mainly because I love that there's actually a human being that might like football more than me and might work harder than me. And his name is Emery Hunt. He's at F-Ball Game Plan on Twitter, Football Game Plan on YouTube. And of course, that's actually the greatest Christmas gift you can give somebody right now. FootballGamePlan.com slash 2024 Draft Guide. Order it. And then go ahead, print out the order form, put it in an envelope, and tell your dad, your uncle, your brother, I don't care, your sister, your daughter, whoever, and tell them, hey, I just got you the best draft guide ever. It'll come like probably March some point, and you will love it. Over a thousand profiles. I like I love that idea actually. Footballgameplan.com slash twenty twenty four draft guide we always go over emory's picks from the week before and then i is this i I guess they call is this bowl week or is next week bowl week because there's a bowl every game this week this every game every day this week it it started it started on saturday and we got one today and it's going to continue to roll through the new year love it absolutely love it emory well let's start with your picks last week okay you hit on um let's see you hit on Jacksonville State, uh, the over, 56 and a half. Who'd they play again? Southwestern Louisiana, my region Cages. I thought so. Who won? Jacksonville State won on the last second field goal, but we cashed that over, which is most <laughs> important to everyone listening to this podcast. Hit the over, 56, it went, 56, it went to 65. Ohio plus three and a half. You nailed that one. And then UCLA laying the two. I forget who UCLA played. I don't have it in front of me. They played Boise. Oh, that's right. Um, The ones you missed, you missed New Mexico State, Fresno State over 51. They got to 47. Uh, Miami, Ohio in the points. App State won 13 to nine. What was that uh, point spread? I don't remember. Jack doesn't have it listed. Because I, I I hit it on I, whatever it was. I think it was like five and a half or something like that. Um, Jack will have to go back and, and, and see. That's what it was. Yeah, Jack, you got to make sure you put like how many points on uh, on my list. That's what you do in life, by the way. You always just blame the people underneath you or your producers. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I love Jack. He's the man. And then you had Cal plus three. They got smoked. Got by stumped. 20. That was a rough game. Yeah, that, that I was shocked at how, because, again, you figure, okay, Texas Tech's quarterback is transferring. They, they have a lot of transfers. Cal played scrappy to, to close out the season. They'd have a little bit more fight in this bowl game. Nope. Texas Tech ran up and down the field on them. Any big takeaways from a prospect standpoint in any of those games, Emory? There's a lot, but let's let's give a shout out to the Division Three national champion, Cortland Red Dragons. They knocked off North Central. North Central had a receiver that I was a big fan of last year as a junior in D'Angelo Hardy, who had five receptions, 146 yards, um, and a touchdown. He had an 80-yard touchdown that looked like to be 
uh, was going to help them win that ball game. But Cortland drove right back down the field and got points, and they won the ball game themselves. But their receiver, too, Cole Burgess, this dude's been on a tear in the playoffs. Um, you know, he's a senior as well, so someone is going to probably be in the small, smaller all-star games. He has six uh, touchdowns in, in the playoffs, 28 receptions, 395 yards. He had 11 for 134 in a touchdown uh, in his championship game, three straight 100-yard games in the playoffs. So both of those receivers, Hardy stylistically reminds me a lot of Andre Reid, a more contemporary comparison. It will probably be Tyler Boyd. So he is a fantastic prospect, and I'm excited to see how Burgess tests and, and plays out if he gets into one of these smaller all-star games. But Hardy has been on the radar for at least three years. Man, it's been a long time since a team from the Northeast won the Division Three National Championship. And Cortland's interesting. Aren't they a state school? And usually state schools are D2. Didn't they used to be D2? I'm, like, I confused. They, I feel like they used to be D2. And, yeah, you're right. They're SUNY Cortland um, because they used to be called Cortland State. Uh, and now they're just, you know, either SUNY Cortland or just Cortland. But it was fun to watch those guys – um, you know, go out there and ball out and win the championship. And this has been a Division Three program that's produced some pro players over the years. Jake Sorenza uh, is killing it up there, one of the best defensive linemen in the CFL right now with the Edmonton Eskimos. I'm sorry, the Edmonton Elks. So he's done a fantastic job. And they've, every all-star game circuit, I'm seeing a Cortland Red Dragon um, the last three to four years. But I know Sorenza... Is one that's a, a CFL all-star and has been killing it up there with the Elks. Awesome. Awesome. Um, speaking of it, killing it, I mean, that, it was not a good performance yesterday for Tommy DeVito and the Giants. He got sacked seven times, got beat up by a former FCS guy, by the way, Tano Passigno from Villanova, who just, I mean, there aren't many guys that look like that guy. Uh, I mean, he is just body beautiful, as they say. So, um, here's my question. I saw this week on your social media at F ball game plan. Somebody might've been, you might've been somebody else. Emery posted your scouting report on Tommy DeVito. I gotta be honest with you, Emery. Like I know he played at Syracuse and Illinois. And I think I watched him play a few games. Didn't really even know he was much of a prospect. Didn't know much about him. Now he's starting. And obviously it's a great story. It's like a movie lives with the parents, all that. What did you think of him coming out? He was someone that I thought could be exactly what he's doing, you know, a QB2 or QB3. Uh, mostly QB3, I felt like he's probably best suited to play in the spring. Um, but he's got an opportunity to play in the fall. And what was fascinating to watch and, and watch him play and then read my scouting report, it's pretty much dead on in terms of what he's able to do uh, throwing the ball and also his areas of in, improvement where he it's, it's, it says in the report, tends to take a lot of sacks because he holds the ball a little bit too long. A lot of those sacks were on him. Um, you know, obviously some are on the offensive line, but you've seen that all throughout the times he started. You also like the fact that he's, I say he's a gamer. You know, he can, he can be efficient. He can move the sticks. Uh, so what has shocked me or surprised me so far in his starts has been his athleticism. He's much more of a runner than he showed on tape at both Syracuse and at Illinois. And he dealt with a lot of injuries at, at both at, well, at Syracuse um, and finally put together a full season at Illinois that last year. But, you know, you saw some things on tape that you see that you see right now in the NFL, but also in the um, at the collegiate, uh, sorry, at the collegiate rank, you didn't see him, you know, run a, a lot. But I feel like that's now an integral part of what he does and why he's had so much success uh, in his starts. More so, not success where they're scoring a bunch of points, but the offense looks at least watchable with him both and Tyrod getting in there because they're quick decision makers in terms of, hey, I need to take off now or I need to get rid of the football more so than Daniel Jones. Got it. Um, you know what else I got on my phone right now? The game time app because I love it because you can see exactly what's available in your area. Like I'm checking out right now and I'm curious to see how much the prices are for the Eagles against the Giants, speaking of Tommy DeVito, because I'll be calling that game. The cheapest ticket right now on the Game Time app, and you guys can see it that are watching us, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. It is $161. So I highly recommend anybody 
to make sure that Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase because you can see before you buy. You get the all-in prices. You buy tickets in seconds with two taps. Find exclusive flash deals. It's amazing. Plus the Game Time guarantee. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code DRAFT for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code DRAFT for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets. Lowest price. Guaranteed. All right, Emery, now we get into this week. Now, most people won't be able to even listen to the show by the time this <laughs> game comes, but we'll do it anyway. Old Dominion's laying five against Western Kentucky. Total is 51. Jack, make sure we're writing all these down exactly with what Emery says. The reason why Old Dominion is favored in this game is because their quarterback of Western Kentucky, Austin Reed, is not going to play. He's going to get prepared for the NFL draft, and I think he's at the East-West Shrine Bowl. Um, so that's a huge piece of the puzzle for Western Kentucky. He's a fantastic quarterback. And we don't know what they have behind him. I mean, pretty sure they're going to have somebody that's going to come in there and throw. Um, and this is a bowl game, so things can get chaotic. Old Dominion has uh, found themselves in this situation. But I do like the over here, the rain that we've seen, uh, that we saw in that Miami of Ohio App State game is now hovering over New Jersey where I am now. So it has bypassed where this bowl game is going to be. So I like this number to go over. Bowl games tend to get crazy. I'm going over here. All right. Then tomorrow night, 9 o'clock. It's interesting because I'm looking at the DraftKings Sportsbook app. It doesn't even tell you what bowl it is. They don't care. I mean, and I don't know. The, the names change so often, whatever. Um, these people pay a lot, by the way, to be sponsors of a bowl that we're not even saying the name of the bowl. But it's Marshall against UTSA. UTSA is laying 11 and a half. Totals 53. Hmm. Wow. This is, this is interesting. Well, we're going to get Frank Harris in the game. We know that. I don't know if Rashawn Ali, the talented tailback who has declared for the draft for Marshall, will play. Um, he's a phenomenal tailback, in my opinion. This is um, nuts, Emery. I know, this right? Is, it, like it, the, the world we live in now, we're like, we don't even know who's playing <laughs> in these games. I guess some people would say that there's value in betting them if you like really stay on top of it and know who's playing and who isn't. Um, I don't know. I mean, on, this, on the one hand, it's nice for teams to have some of these guys get playing time for the next year. But on the other hand, it's like, it's just tough. But think about it. Last, the uh, the Myrtle Beach Bowl, you had Ohio and Georgia Southern. Ohio is lost their starting quarterback, Curtis Rourke, to the transfer portal. He's now with Indiana. Uh, so it was like, wow, they're starting a guy who's making his first start in a, in a game, and it was in the bowl game, and he beat the brakes off Georgia Southern. So these games can get, you know, a little bit crazy. So whoever's going to be out there for both Marshall uh, in, in the backfield and also – on, on offense for UTSA, I feel like because it's Frank Harris's last game, he'll start, he'll play. I do like the over here as well. Uh, lady, I, I, w- I would stay away from the point total because, again, bowl games can go back and forth, but I do like the over because I just can't trust that UTSA defense to slow down Marshall. Over 53 for UTSA and Marshall. What about Thursday, Emery? It's Syracuse. Laying two and a half against South Florida. Syracuse, by the way, picking up a big transfer portal addition in Kyle McCord. I want you to get to that game in a second. Right now, I'm hungry. Whenever a game goes to timeout or whenever the clock stops on this podcast, that's time to order in with DoorDash. Pizza cravings hit at halftime, ordering time. When you're dreaming about tacos during a timeout, boom, they're on your doorstep. Wait, you want burgers, chips, dips, drinks, and wings instead? Even better. Order on DoorDash and get everything you want delivered without missing a minute of the game. Emery, we got to talk about this. And I'm sure people know Kyle McCord, as we get into the Syracuse-South Florida game, has trans- announced his transfer to Syracuse uh, with Fran Brown up there, who will be the new head coach. 
there's no way he would have transferred th- if he thought he was going to be Ohio State's quarterback again. He had to have heard, or they had to have told him they're getting somebody else, and that's why he left, right? Absolutely. You have to, you, you have to know that. Just like with USC, the number one recruit, who they signed last year, who played early in the season when games were well out of hand for, for the opponent, um, and they pulled Caleb Williams, he is transferring. So you would think he'd be the starter this upcoming season. So if he's leaving and Kyle McCord is leaving, that tells you both programs have identified a quarterback in the portal that they're going to bring in to be their guy next year. So it's just it's this on top of um, bowl season, on top of high school recruiting. If you're a high, like Coach Reed, who I, who's a colleague of mine at CBS Sports HQ, he's with 24-7 Sports. He talked about, yeah, the top 200 guys are going to be fine regardless. But it's those next 200 that probably would have snuck in to you know a G5 program, maybe a Sunbelt program or whatnot, are now getting pushed down because those guys are uh, those schools, and I can understand why, they're going to the portal and get college-ready guys. So we've seen like the whole dynamic, the whole paradigm shift in college football with recruiting with them high, from the high school perspective to now what is technically college free agency. So it's just wild to see, man. Oh, by the way, late, uh, takes uh, South Florida in these points. Um, I, I like the Bulls. They, they're playing. Shout out to them getting to a bowl game. They, they've been downtrodden. Um, but this year they did a really good job. They actually pushed Alabama to the brink um, and helped them make the right decision by putting Milrow back in the starting lineup the next game. So I think South Florida playing with a, a little bit more fight, a little bit more continuity, stability, will get the win here against Syracuse. Emory taking South Florida and the two and a half against Syracuse. Friday, you have UCF laying five points against Georgia Tech. Hmm. Totals 66 and a half. High total. But this is this is going to be a fantastic game, man. If you follow Georgia Tech all, all season, they've been playing fun football. And UCF, yeah. we know they Their can Their quarterback's score. good. I forget where he's from. Haynes he's good. King. Haynes King. He came from Texas A&M. Um, and so that's the guy to watch in this game because the Yellow Jackets have been scoring points. So, listen, I know it's a high total, but this is a bowl game. This is a springboard for next year. I'm going to go over. I'm uh, Listen, I love these bowl game overs uh, because technically you're going to get some good weather. We got killed by what happened at the Cure Bowl with, with App State, Miami of Ohio, but I like this to go over as well. Wow, Emery's, Emery's in on the overs here, 66 and a half, over 66 and a half um, for Georgia Tech and UCF. A bunch of that's Friday night. A bunch of games on Saturday, Emory, that we need to get to. Duke is getting eight points against Troy. I mean, this is like, this is when you know it's about who's playing and who's not. Riley Leonard is going to Notre Dame now. He's taking the Sam Hartman path. I don't blame him. I mean, supposedly, you know, through the grapevine, I have no reports. I have no factual information. Somebody at one game I went to this year said that they had heard that Sam Hartman got $3 million for, for one semester at Notre Dame, one college football season, which if that's true, that's amazing. Good for him. And you know what? For these colleges, Emory, and these college, it's probably worth it, you know, to, to have a really good year. Um, and so Riley Leonard's following in his footsteps. It's just weird to watch an awesome Duke Notre Dame game with Riley Leonard out there, then he gets hurt, and now he's Notre Dame's quarterback. And a great Duke Notre Dame game with Mike Elko on the sideline, and now he's not out there anymore. So you you felt you feel like okay, their coach is going to Texas A and M, their quarterback is going to Notre Dame. Troy won the very tough and competitive Sun Belt Conference, so you you have to understand that Troy is going to come into this ball game trying to carry the flag for the entire Sun Best Conference. So. Eight points does seem like a lot, but there's so much turnover right now at Duke. I'm willing to lay these points with the Troy Trojans. They can score, and I know Duke's mantra is defense, but I can't trust their offense against a defense that's going to be amped, that can get pressure, um, and they also do a fantastic job on the back end, turning the ball over. I think Troy wins, but also covers the spread, too. You know what's wild? Um, 
the two people I knew at Duke University football right now were Mike Elko, the head coach, and Riley Leonard, the quarterback. Now that one of them are there. Like, I don't know. I know Manny Diaz is the next head coach, but I don't know, you know, what that means in terms of, I don't think he's coaching this game. They usually have the interim guy from the old staff, which I always think is weird, but it's also weird if you have the new guy come in and, like, all of a sudden change the offense. Basically, that's probably the best way to describe everything in college football right now. It's just weird. Everything about it's weird. We're going into the fourth quarter of the podcast. Emery, the fourth quarter is in football, obviously, where the magic happens, where games are won and champions are made. Same thing in business, where sales teams become legends. That's why HubSpot built Sales Hub, to give sales reps the deal-making tools they need to win their Q4. Sales Hub's prospecting workspace organizes your schedule, goals, and to-do list in one place to save your team Precious fourth quarter time. Plus, smart sequences help sales reps close deals faster than ever. So get ready to dominate Q4 with Sales Hub. Learn more at HubSpot.com slash sales. Emery, what about Saturday, another game? Uh, we got a close spread here. Arkansas State laying one point against Northern Illinois. Totals 53 and a half. I have taken the under in this one. I love how Northern Illinois is able to grind the game to a halt. They want to run, run, and run some more. They want to control the line of scrimmage. Arkansas State can do that. Um, and it was good to see another Sun Best Conference you know, team get into a bowl game, uh, a record 12. Uh, so that bowl, Capital One Bowl Championship Cup should be ours. Uh, although we didn't do it our end of the bargain as our Raging Cajuns lost in a heartbreaker. Uh, but I do like Northern Illinois here to, to help bring this number down under the total. So I like the under. Air Force getting two and a half against JMU totals 41. Now, their starting quarterback is back at Air Force. Love it. They also have the Jim Thorpe Award winner. Love it. JMU, new coaching staff, although they did hire one of my favorites in Bob Chesney. He's going to do a fantastic job at JMU, the Holy Cross uh, head coach, former Assumption head coach as well. Um, just been moving his way uh, up the ranks in, in the right way and doing it at a great job at, at all stops. Um, they're, uh, hopefully they're going to keep their quarterback that jumped in the transfer portal. But in this ball game, yes, they have a couple of weeks to prepare you know, for Air Force, but it's not that that quadruple option is going to be a problem. And they're getting their start quarterback back when they were like top 15 in the country. I'm going to lay these points with Air Force. Yeah, I think that's smart. The, the academies always do well in bowl games, I feel like. What about Utah State, Georgia State? Utah State's laying a point, total 61 and a half. Over. Uh, listen, Utah State has been outstanding uh, scoring the ball. And we know Georgia State has shown all throughout the season that they have the ability to strike quick. Now, yes, yeah, some of their guys have jumped into the portal. I get it. Uh, but they still have enough, I feel like, to to really help push this over. I know Utah State will hold up their end of the bargain. I like the over in this game. Eastern Michigan, South Alabama. Eastern Michigan's getting 16 against South Alabama. Total's 46. They have been so inconsistent offensively, Eastern Michigan has all throughout the season. Samson Evans is a fantastic tailback for them, uh, but I like um, Sunbelt Conference's own South Alabama to win. I'm going to lay the points. This is 16 a lot of points. points? It's a lot of points, but South Alabama will, keep, will force Eastern Michigan to make plays consistently throwing the ball. They'll score and take Samson Evans out the game, forcing Eastern Michigan to throw the ball. That's not what they want to do. I like the Jaguars to, to lay these 16 and a half points. Utah's laying six and a half against Northwestern. Totals 41 and a half. Northwestern is the story of the year. Um, and Utah, you know, who's playing quarterback? Who's going to, what type of offense we're going to see? This is a physical game. I feel like Northwestern has a lot to prove. I'm taking the under. Ooh, okay. Under 41 and a half. Lastly, Emery. Coastal Carolina getting 10.5 against San Jose State. Totals 54. No Grayson McCall, who's in the portal. And it's NC going State, to, I think. Going to NC State. That's a great look for him. That's a, that's a nice landing spot for Grayson McCall. A chance to re-elevate his draft stock. 
right? Because it was it, it went up, then it went down, and now he gets to go to NC State. But I'm going to take, um, you know, I, I can't trust Coastal here in this spot, man. So uh, I'm going against the Sun Belt Conference team because I just, it, without Grayson and McCall, I just can't trust the shot to clear to get it done. Got it. San Jose State laying the 10 and a half. The keg is kicked. We're all tapped out. Thanks for tuning in to College Draft. Make sure to also check out the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, Even Money, and Fantasy Feast, all on the DraftKings Network, YouTube, or subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform.